On this episode of Pedal Box, the story of the front end of the kit car is coming to a middle. Yep, I weld up loads and loads of sheet metal panels here. And I finally fit the splitter, which has been sat in the shed for the better part of 18 months. So in this episode, we're going to be working on the front of the car once again, completing more of this front bumper section and hopefully wrapping it around in a removable section on both sides underneath the light clusters. Now, the other bit we're going to start on first, though, is this rollover that we put in in order to shape the bonnet. Now that the bonnet curve is known and its motion is known and we know what the gap tolerance is we need under this side, we can start working on getting this down because, as you can see at the moment, this bit is high and as you go across, it drops down below not only does the gap get bigger across to the edges, it also ends up dropping well down below where this edge is. So this needs lowering down and flattening over, and then we need to blend this into the arch. So that's what we're going to start off doing first. Now, once again, I'll just be using a selection of little hammers. I've got my round over hammers here with the rounded faces, and this is my substitute flat face hammer after the other one broke. The head actually fractured in half, and I haven't managed to repair it or find another one that's a decent quality and also not a lot of money or come with a complete set because I don't need another one of these hammers and I don't need another full set of dollies. So I need to find a new one of those, but this one does perfectly in the meantime. So we'll just be using that and an angle grinder and just slicing down, folding it back over a little bit and then welding it up. After an hour or so, we've managed to get this reasonably smooth, and the transition from the front plate here up and round into the bonnet is almost perfectly what I was looking for. Now, the gap along the back is also nice and even now, and the bonnet still opens up. This corner is a little bit difficult to guess past, so that might need some very fine tuning in the future, but for now, this is absolutely fine. Now, I've built up quite a lot of this back edge with weld, and we can see here how the bonnet had a step from the front which went up, to get onto the top and at the edge it kind of dropped down behind this little roundover piece that we've now fixed on this side so that's all looking good now i have rinsed through quite a bit of my gas doing that so i'm going to leave it for the time being not do the other side and move on to the next bit and i'll fill in all the rest across the front of here now i know the system works once i've got a new gas bottle and i can actually uh, afford to spend quite a lot of gas to fill all this in now, some of the things that I did on this, obviously cut out the, the rough shape and then put it up against the front of the car. And I actually worked in a very small bend as it just wraps around. And that's so that it comes off the curve around the front of the, the, the main bumper and goes straight across the car. But that gives me two things. One, a much nicer curve into the, the extension panel. And two, it also gives a little bit more clearance around this crash bar. Now, you might remember me saying that these panels have to be removable and quite obviously this one, isn't. This one is welded onto the vehicle. So at the moment, this is no good. But right now, I need this welded in place because that makes making this removable a lot easier. I know that sounds a bit contradictory, but I want some brackets that go onto the framework that holds the lights. And that framework is difficult to get to and making a bracket off the car would be extremely difficult to work out or it would be a bit piecemeal here and there and there's a lot of room for error so tacking this in place i can just build some brackets from some existing bolt holes and some from some new spots right the way out up to this cut the welds and then put a panel across the front and that should be a much quicker way of getting this panel to completion right off the bat rather than having to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth all of the time so hopefully that's going to work um, and then once those are done we'll have a really good idea of what the bumper of this car is actually going to look like 
Well, as is so often the way, you start adding a few bits and pieces to work out some geometry, and those pieces end up becoming the solution. And what I've done is added this piece of inch box onto the bottom. It's just bolted on at the side, um, and then a couple of braces that come down from the panel that we're trying to support, uh, as well as a cross brace to the inside corner. So this is nicely triangulated, because it's going to have quite a bit of force from the splitter, which I've also had to start fabricating up to make sure that I get things in the right place and get the holes drilled and also added some bracing onto the outside edge of this panel. So now we can actually get around to putting the, um, the metalwork on the front of this piece and on the other side. Now the bracket I was actually trying to make at the start, going from this section right onto the inside to the headlight mount, is actually really, really simple and was one of the last parts that I did. I only just finished fabbing these up and test fitting the first one on this side. This is just two little plates uh, about an inch and a half square with some triangulation on the end with an M6 hole or 6mm hole for an M6 bolt through the middle and one of them welds onto the inside edge at the bottom of the wing mount and the other one goes onto the inside edge of this panel. So this whole section will just unbolt with this screw, this screw down here, one at the bottom and then whatever we manage to add on to the side to hold on the um, outside edge of this bodywork onto both the splitter and this panel. Well, they'd kind of ran away with the skeleton here a little bit, so I'm going to move on to my favourite part of mangling the sheet metal. Usually what happens at this point is we tack everything in place, we go, yep, that looks great, I seam weld around all the edges, and the sheet metal gets all warped, and Adrian has to spend a lot of time hammering it. So I'm not sure if we're going to try and solve that this time by, you know, maybe learning how to weld properly, because obviously we've not been doing something right all the time before. But one way or another, this piece is getting welded on the front now. We're going to do the same the other side, which I can't show you because it's bathed in very, very bright sunlight but uh, much the same on both sides. These pieces go on and then underneath, I think Aid has a plan for those. I don't know what it is yet, but there is a plan. But yeah, for now, get these all on and we'll have a bit more of our front end ready. Now with the front skins attached, or mostly attached, it's time for us to start doing a bit more framework again. Now to make the rest of the framework, we need to know where the split is going to come out to and a few other bits and pieces. So, Aid's going to feed that in from off camera now. And we're going to bolt it all up in place and that gives us a bit better idea of where the outboard frame has to come out to. This takes a few minutes, so uh, bear with us. Well, a second ago, I told you we were putting the splitter back on so that we could start designing a frame. And as we tend to do, we once again got carried away. We've gutted kind of the whole corner of the car. We've redesigned a whole bunch of the skeleton here, and we've tried to correct for about three years of accumulated kind of guesses. Now, we didn't really know how the front end of the car was ever gonna to come together until right now. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here where one part of the frame attached to the body, attached to the front end that we're building, and it all got a bit messy. So we've cleaned a lot of that up now by redesigning it once again. Now, because we think we're cleverer than we know we are, we're trying to put in an air curtain in here. Now that's a drag reduction feature that takes some air from the front of the car and ducts it into the wheel wells. I don't know how it works, I just know that it does. There's a Kyle Engineers video on it that's really good and explains how it all goes on, but I can't remember. So the gist is, uh, rather than having the front of the car sort of curve round as aggressively as we initially thought we were going to, we're gonna keep an outer skin on here, all the way around the side as, you know, is a fairly normal corner of a car. But inside we're gonna have another duct feeding from a void somewhere in here through into the wheel well through this gap that we've made. Now as far as I can remember, and I might be wrong on this one, but I'm pretty sure the way the air curtain helps with drag is that it helps it reattach the side of the car a bit more cleanly. If I remember right, you get kind of momentum builds, the air kind of being pushed out the side of the car, and it has a hard time recoupling around here. So the air curtain, I think, just helps inject a new stream of air into this pocket here and keeps everything flowing a little bit nicer. Now the upshot of all of this, besides a drag improvement that we're hoping to get from these air curtains, is that we've massively simplified how all of this corner of the car comes together. It doesn't really look like much at the minute, but beforehand, we, we kind of ended up with the front frame and the headlight frame and the body frame and the radiator frame all being sandwiched together by one bolt in here. And we've completely removed all of that now. We've massively simplified everything and moved some of the attachment points around. So here, we just have the front bumper frame mounting onto the body. The headlight frame mounts inboard to the radiator frame, so that's a lot more solid and a lot kind of more isolated than it used to be. And hopefully it should be a lot easier to take this whole thing apart without having to line up four separate sections of car all at once.
Well, sure enough, the nearly empty gas bottle has become an empty gas bottle, leaving us unable to do any more fabrication for now. So yep. we're going to run off, see if we can grab a fresh one. And if we can't, that does kind of put the brakes on everything for now. Yeah, I maybe got a little bit carried away in saying that I wasn't going to go across the front and finish it off because the gas bottle was quite low. And I did, as you might have noticed during the episode, but it does look a lot better in my defense. On the other hand, we haven't managed to finish anything else that we wanted to get done, which is a little bit of a downside. But nevertheless, we have got an awful lot of this front end on. As you can see, it's not quite bolted in at the moment because there's some more work to do, but it is looking really rather good. And this has been a source of a lot of stress for both of us trying to work out how to not make the front of the car look terrible. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a shame we couldn't quite finish up the air curtains here. So obviously we've got most of the duct in place, but yeah. we don't have the kind of outer I'm not sure what you'd call this, the outer skin almost, or maybe almost the aerofoil yeah. of, a, uh, of an air kit. It's a bit of an aerofoil, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Ours won't be. Ours won't be, yeah. to be. <laughs> Ours will be a lot less of an aerofoil and more just, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a vertical splitter, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's splitting the air in two different directions. That's all it's doing. Yeah. But it is still going to work as an air curtain across the back and around. Well, we hope. We hope. It should yeah. do. But yeah, so if you would like to help us buy more gas, although by the time this goes out, we we'll hopefully have, got new, have gas. got new gas, yeah. yeah. But if you'd like to buy our next, next bottle of gas, you can support us at shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy long sleeve t-shirts like this, as well as beanies like the one Chris isn't wearing. You can also jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. You can support us from as little as a dollar a month on there. The five dollar tiers and up get access to our Discord server. We've got regular pictures of this going on there. When I'm back home in Wales, I've got tons and tons of stuff on the SD1 going up. So there's a I whole. St still a need whole. to edit all that SD1 video you've done. I've, I've sent Aid like 40 minutes or an hour or so of video <laughs> on the rover. More than that, actually. <laughs> Might be yeah. Some more, yeah. That will be coming once I get some free time that I can actually sit down and edit that. Fear warning though, it is just camera video, so you know, <laughs> yeah. it's not going to be you know to this sort of standard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's coming along really well. I hope to have that back on the road, Touchwood, in uh, probably about a month or so. Um, yeah. I do have an event I need to get it to, so uh, <laughs> pressure's on. Which, yeah. considering it has no interior right now, it's maybe a long a way to go. Tricky. Yeah. <laughs> just strip it out, make it like yeah. the golf track car. <laughs> also, if you go to shop.pedalbox.show and find it doesn't work, that's because I forgot to renew the domain today. So if it does work, it's because I didn't forget to renew it today. So let's cross our fingers. You too can see whether or not we managed to get the domain renewed and make more progress on this. Subscribe to the channel below, hit the little bell notification, like the video and let us know what you think of this front end design in the comments because honestly this has been a long time coming and we've, we've spent a lot of, might not look like we've spent a lot of time just throwing parts at this, but up until the point that we started welding, we had actually spent a lot of time trying to work out how we were going to do this. So we'll see how it turns out next time and we'll see you then.